Hello, it's another of... Where's the camera? Ah, there we are. It's another of Murdoch's Music Minutes. I look like I've just fallen out of bed and I review albums, rank discographies or talk about some of my favorite popular music in general. This review may come as a bit of a surprise, but yes, I'm going to talk about status quo. Together with ACDC and ZZ Top, they form what I'd like to call the, tri the monotonous trinity, because they are one of those bands that are frequently accused of having done one and the same album a dozen times over. Because... If you know one album well, you know them all. A constant boogie shuffle is what they stand for around the world. Round, round, round. You see, once it starts, you can never stop. So when reviewing a status quo album, it can become a bit difficult to pick out a specific one. However, um, reducing status quo just to boogie rock is a bit of a limited view of the band, at least if you look at their early recordings. But today I'm going to talk about their seventh studio album, Quo, uh, the Latin word for where. So where were status quo as a band in 1974? Status quo look back at a long history going back as far as the year 1962, when the band started as a group of school kids under the name The Scorpions in London. Founding members were guitarist and singer Francis Rossi and bass player Alan Lancaster. Lineups and band name underwent some changes in the following years until guitarist Rick Parfitt joined in 1967, at which point the band was called The Status Quo, soon to be shortened to status quo. Stylistically, the band, like so many others at the time, performed a cross between garage rock and psychedelia in the late 60s. They finally managed to gain recognition in the charts when they released their single Pictures of Matchstick Man in early 1968 and the psych pop ditty Ice in the Sun the same year. While Matchstick Man should remain the group's only bigger hit in the USA, this was the humble beginning of a tremendous streak of success in the UK later on. Their second album, Spare Parts, also still featured psychedelic elements, but Status Quo already moved away from the genre by 1969, turning into a denim-clad bluesy rock outfit with the albums Mark Kelly's Greasy Spoon and Dog of Two Head in 1970 and 71 respectively. By that time, they had lost their keyboard player and had become the classic four-piece guitar band everybody knows. Their next album, Pile Driver from 1972, established the success formula for status quo sound. Straight boogie rock with a hard rock edge. And they hardly ever strayed away from that afterwards. Status Quo now were at the beginning of a long run of hit singles with Paper Plane of Piledriver and Caroline of the follow-up Hello. With their biggest commercial hits still before them in the late 70s, the band released its seventh album, simply titled Quo, in May 1974. It is a neat little... No, there's the camera. It is a neat little album we're talking about, with a runtime of about 36 minutes and 8 tracks. The cover artwork can be considered the closest that um, Status Quo ever came to looking like a heavy prog act. Backwater opens the album and for the first minute Status Quo rather surprised the listeners with a lengthy, more hard rock intro until they then soldier on through their typical boogie rock. The boogie style on Quo, however, is played, as is already noticeable from this first track, 
with an extra dose of grittiness. Lyrically, um, the song offers another lone wolf meets entrancing lady one night stand rock and roll story. This time around, it is she who leaves him to wake up lonely and cold in the morning down Backwater Road. Backwater moves directly into Just Take Me. This is probably the most unusual track on the album if you are used to uh, status quo's radio hits from the late 70s and early 80s. It starts with some cool, almost tribal drumming and then turns into a high energy, hard rocking song. It's my favorite on Quo. And I wished the band had done more uh, material in this vein over the years. Like most songs on Quo, this is a cooperation, a songwriting cooperation between guitarist uh, Rick Parfit and Alan Lancaster. And for lack of a better word, this one is a true banger. Number three on here is Break the Rules, the album's single, which went to uh, number 10 in the UK. Allegedly, Status Quo would have preferred Backwater as the single choice, but I don't know. I guess the label intervened and um, decided that Break the Rules uh, should become the single. Uh, the track is... Boogie bar rock by the book, including some honky tonk piano and harmonica. Um, it's not the most memorable status quo single, but of course, if you are into the typical status quo sound, this tune will tick off all the boxes. Drifting away sense of side one of quo and returns to the heavier sound that dominates this album. A fun song with even a twin guitar intermezzo and played with an energy and urgency that uh, sometimes is missing from the more boogie by numbers tracks that Status Quo churned out so many times. Um, I believe Drifting Away is sung by bassist Alan Lancaster, a song about not wanting a relationship to end, though one feels that uh, she's not into it anymore. Business as usual in the lyric department, but with the fun verse, I got told by a friend of mine that you don't want me anymore. Now my friends got a broken nose, sure, and I got a broken jaw. Ah! The innocence of the 1970s. Let's see if side two can keep up the energy of the first half. Where is that camera again? <sighs> Don't think it matters competently continues the boogie rampage. The words to the song really don't matter at all. But status quo could be cheeky in the least expected places. Of course, Don't Think It Matters also rides the boogie shuffle, but there is a break that utilizes little bar shifts. 
This is followed by the shortest track on the album, a song called Fine, Fine, Fine. Um, a fluffy little song with a bit of a country rock flavor. For Lonely Man, which is track seven, they even get out um, a bit of acoustic guitar and Hammond organ in the background. It is sung by Parfit and pleasantly breaks away from the usual formula you find on Quo Records. Um, I also like the melodic guitar solo in this song. And just like the predecessor, hello, did <laughs> Quo ends with a long track, the seven minute slow train, which isn't slow at all. It is a multi part boogie jam, perfect for bashing out life and making a lot of status quo fans very happy, I guess. There is also um, some very nice twin guitar playing on Slow Train, an aspect that uh, often is a bit underrated when talking about the music of Status Quo. So there we have it, Quo by Status Quo. It doesn't feature a big and famous hit single, but due to some changes in the often formulaic structure, um, this album shows that Status Quo had it in them to produce solid rock albums. Um, of their albums from the 1970s, or probably overall, um, this is, to me, their most interesting one. It's a pity they didn't experiment a little bit more, because otherwise they maybe would have arrived at at least one really classic rock album in their discography. Well, um, go and check it out, especially if you have that preconception of status quo always sounding the same. Quo gives you some of that for sure, but mostly demonstrates that the band had more up their sleeves than they are usually given credit for. Quo remains a very fun, straightforward 1970s rock album. With that being said, thanks for Camera Corvadis. With that being said, thanks for watching and keep looking out for more Murdoch Music Minutes.